What's up, you beauties? It is October 5th, and it is a glorious day to talk some NHL hockey with you. My name is Chris, and I'm stoked to welcome you to the first episode of Bench Talk. On today's episode, I'm going to be breaking down the best storylines you should be following for the upcoming NHL season. If you haven't already, please drop a like and subscribe. This season is going to be an epic one, and it's going to be a very, very profitable one for all of us who love betting NHL hockey. The first and most important storyline to follow this year is the amount of high-class players that swapped uniforms for different teams. We saw the likes of Nazem Kadri, Alex Debrinkat, Claude Giroux, Jonathan Huberdeau, Matthew Kachuk, and Johnny Goodrow all trade in last year's uniforms for new colors and a new hope of winning the ultimate prize. Kadri signing with the Flames makes very little sense to me, as does Goodrow with the Blue Jackets. These are two players who will simply not put their new teams over the top and make them instant contenders. Kadri had a great season with the Avs winning the cup and putting up a career best 87 points, but he will definitely add some grit to the Flames, but he's simply not the missing piece they are looking for. As for Johnny Hockey, he put up 115 points in Calgary and still bolted the Flames the first chance he got. He wound up in Columbus, but the Blue Jackets are minus 700 to miss the postseason, so unless Johnny Hockey turns into Mr. Hockey, the signing makes no sense from a hockey perspective. Over in Ottawa, the Sens collected a few nice pieces in Claude Giroux and Alex Debrinkat, and with a collection of young talent they have uh, both up front and on defense, the Sens could be a very, very dangerous team to play this year. You can find them at plus 220 to make the postseason, which I believe is worth a bet. Speaking of making the postseason, the Chicago Blackhawks will likely be on the outside looking in again this year. Perhaps come trade deadline, they will be sellers, which means will they or won't they finally trade Patrick Kane? Kane has been the subject of rumors all offseason and will likely be the focal point and main attraction come trade deadline day. The problem with Kane is that he owns a one-year uh, cap hit of $10.5 million uh, left on his contract, and he does have a full no-trade clause, which means you'll have to waive it in order to handpick his preferred destination. I know a handful of teams that could absolutely use his services, but there's only a handful of teams that can afford him. The Rangers... The Leafs, unless they pull up a major uh, move and shed some salary cap. The Avalanche, who need to uh, replace Nazem Kadri's production. And the Canes, who could use a distributor. Where will he end up? Only time will tell. Perhaps the most intriguing storyline to follow this year will be Alexander Ovechkin's pursuit of chasing Gretzky for the most goals scored in NHL history. Ovi currently sits on 780 goals which leaves him 21 behind Gordy Howe and 114 behind Gretzky for top spot. Ovi's coming off another 50-goal campaign, which was his ninth of his career. He averages 34 goals per season, but that's with two shortened 40-plus game seasons on the docket. If he does it the hard way, he'll need to average 38 goals uh, over the next three seasons to tie Gretzky at 894. But as we've seen with uh, Ovechkin, that's right around his average of 34 but he's more than capable of dropping 45 goals plus in any given season. This year's cap team has a returning uh, nucleus uh, outside of the injury to Nicholas Backstrom, and I wouldn't bet against Ovi dropping 45 or more goals this season. And lastly, it would be silly of me not to talk about my hometown team, the Toronto Maple Leafs. I know exactly what you guys are going to say, what kind of trips you have. 1967, it was 4-1, first round losses here, there, everywhere. We, losing to Columbus and Montreal were two weaker teams in back-to-back -back seasons. I've heard it all, yada, yada, yada. I'm never going to jump ship on this team, but as the years go on and I get older and the results never change, it's hard to get excited for Leafs hockey. I've seen this cycle uh, too many times before. We jump out to a hot start, we coast, and we do enough to build a lead in the standings so that we're safely in a playoff spot. We slump, we have injuries, we blame the coach, we peak a little bit into April thinking everything's okay, and then we lose again in the first round. I'm sick of it. This year, perhaps maybe a little bit different. The Leafs are breaking in two new goalies. They have injuries on the blue line, which will test their depth, and they'll be without John Tavares uh, for the first few weeks of the regular season. Maybe, just maybe, this season will be out of character for them. Uh, we'll slump, we'll overcome at some adversity early on in the year, and we'll grow some balls uh, come April as playoff time rolls around and maybe win a playoff round or two. Who the hell knows? Either way, it's now or never for this team, and if it doesn't work this year, it needs to get blown up. So now I pose a question to all of Leafs Nation. What's going to be a successful year for this team? I know winning the Cup is all that matters, but is it the year of success if we just get out of the first round alone, or do we need more and more and more success 
to deem this year a not an instant failure? Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think. That wraps up this edition of Bench Talk. On tomorrow's episode, I'm going to be breaking down the divisions and who I like to win each division. And I have a lotto ticket for the division winners that I'll be making this year. It pays 67 to 1. My name is Chris. Thanks for watching. And always remember to keep your head up while you're crossing the trolley tracks.